with a word of prayer. Father God, we love you so much. We lift this time to you as you are so worthy of our praise and of our attention. We ask that this service today would be for you, that it would lead us to a better relationship with you, and better yet, it would add to your kingdom. And we ask these things in your son's precious name. You may be seated. You know, I kind of feel like the old Johnny Carson with that look there. All right, welcome and announcements. So, exercise, is that the first one? Yes. Oh, baby shower today. Baby shower. All right, you going to be there? Okay, better here than headed to the hospital, okay? Did you pitch it? Okay. All right. Two to four, Alice and Bedworth. And I believe this is the last one, right? And with that, we got to exercise class Monday and Thursday at 9 a.m. And uh, online Bible study Tuesday night at 7. We're going to do a little switch up here. Um, Tim's going to cover Wednesday morning, and I'm going to cover Tuesday night for a little while, and uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes for a little bit, because i got some other things I need to do here in the week. Uh, so Wednesday morning Bible study, 10 a.m., meet here, and uh, then y'all can decide what y'all are going to do with that. All right. Prayer shawl knitting group Wednesdays at 1. Family meal Wednesday at 5.15. Who's cooking this week? All right. You're cooking, right? So what are we cooking? Have we decided? Goulash. Little Ross. Little Ross and Goulash. Goulash. All right, great. Say again. Sticks to your ribs. That it does. Eminem youth, adult uh, Eminem and youth will have their time, and then adult Bible study. Youth, you know, I know some of you here. I bought you a football throw up deal. Be careful when you throw that not to hit outside of that. You know, don't don't give it all you got. You know, accuracy, not strength. All right? All right, thanks. The, uh, we are studying the book of John. We finally made it through chapter one. Or, yeah, we finished chapter one, so chapter two this week. And that will start Wednesday night at six, but we eat at 515. There is a parenting class. You want to talk about that? As you hold the baby? I have to read this because I don't have a ton of information. What I can tell you is um, a gentleman that I work with, Sean Davis, he's the middle, uh, middle school principal at Texas Middle School in Texarkana, and his wife, Monica, are members at Beach Street Baptist Church in Texarkana, and they have been to um, a conference, I believe it was this very conference that they went to in person. And their church is hosting it. And um, the details, this one-day simulcast event with special guest Kirk Cameron is an opportunity to gather with parents in your community and hear insights and practical wisdom to help you develop a deeper relationship with your team in today's ever-challenging cultural crisis. Um, he did say it's for teens and grandparents. And I have his number and his wife's phone number. If you want more information, they can give you more details. If you want registration information, you can contact me and I can send you the link. You can register online if you're interested in attending. It is $10 for a single person and then $15 a couple. And um, it will be hosted by Kirk Cameron. Very good. Are you, you, you wanted to hold that? Did you want to say something? <laughs> No? Okay, well, yeah, good enough for everyone, good enough for me. <laughs> All right. So, is that the same thing? No, nope, this is a different one. <laughs> okay. So, Cece Winans is going to be in Texarkana at First Baptist on Thursday night, April the 20th. Um, it's her Belief For It tour. Um, we do the Belief For It song. Some up here, y'all, it will yeah, they'll be, be having church that night. Okay, it'll be a really great experience. If anybody would like to go, you let me know. Um, now, right there, it says tickets are $85. That's if you want to get there and you want to hook up and all that. We're not. We're doing general admission. They're $35 plus the fees. So, the tickets are $45. Okay? Um, doors open at 6. 
concerts at 7. We will take band or bands or whatever we need to do. So if you're interested, I'm going to talk about this for the next couple of weeks before we get tickets ordered. But $45, Thursday night, April the 20th, CC Winans. It'll be wonderful. Okay, thanks. Thank you. That sounds like fun. Huh? Two cents. Okay. Um, what's next? A hymn. Okay, let, before we get to the hymn, there's a sale going on at Dillard's. If any of you guys need, and, and ladies, there's ladies stuff too, but I'm just interested in you guys. Hey, 65% off, guys. If you need some new clothes for church or going to get married soon or anything like that, come to Dillard's. All right, let's have a hymn.
We come now to a time in our worship where we're going to open up the prayer altar if y'all want to come forward and pray. But there's a few other things uh, that are happening this week as well. Uh, we had our United Met or Methodist Men breakfast yesterday. And Wes, when are we going to have that one again? February. Will it be the last Saturday in February? Last Saturday of every month, we will have Dan's breakfast. We're going to change the time from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. So that will give you time. Hey, guys, you got to eat breakfast on Saturday just the same as Jews read it. Time to come and join us. <laughs> and y'all certainly missed out on some great food because it certainly was good. Thank you, Kathy, for your contribution to that as well. Uh, that's what he said. And me. And me. <laughs> You're on page three. I'm only on page two. And Melanie Goodwin contributed two casseroles as well. She's not here for me to personally thank. But she's a nurse. Oh, is she? <laughs> but anyway, we're going to move it to nine instead of eight. But also, upward basketball uh, starts this weekend. Uh, the uh, kindergarten uh, division will play at 9 o'clock to 10, and the, uh, the older boys and girls will play at uh, 10. So if you want to come and watch that, you're more than welcome to come. We've got some participants right over here. Kai, you looking forward to it? I know Kimley is, right? Awesome. And Tripp, you going to be here to play? Awesome, dude. Awesome. And then we've got some referees. Uh, that are going to be here, right? You, okay, all right. But anyway, that starts uh, this weekend, too. Uh, a few things we need to keep on our prayer list. Uh, Kitty Waddell, uh, keep her in your prayers, and also her son, Brian. He's dealing with a bout of pneumonia right now. Uh, keep in your prayers, uh, Kim Taylor and Maggie Snyder, still looking for a kidney transplant. And also the family of Joanne Papa. She uh, passed away this past week. She was a teacher in Redwater. Highly influential in her school, great teacher. Uh, just keep that family in your prayers as well. And uh, keep our church in your prayers. See a lot of new and smiling uh, faces this morning. And uh, there's a great singing voice coming from the center of the congregation. And Chris Moser, we appreciate you singing out loud this morning. Glad you brought your singing talents uh, to New Boston and Jan. Great to have you as well. So, but anyway, we'll open up the altar. And if you want to come forward and pray, you're one of welcome. Thank you. to be more effective 
both as Christian witnesses and the church. Lord, we'll ask all these things in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. God, we ask you to take our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. May we be the cheerful givers that you ask us to be. May we give to you as you so freely give to us. And we ask these things in your son. 
Son's precious name. Amen. <laughs>
it says, hey girl, how's your day? You know one of those times when the bulletin kind of makes a goof? That's, that's what happened. But I think the Lord did this one because, you know, I allow so many different aspects of the bulletin to come together and the service to come together by expecting God's movement in that. And so I, I allow Richard to pick the songs and not tell me. And I allow uh, Miss Linda to pick the, the uh, call to worship, and she she always tells me, but she doesn't have to. And uh, and then you know all the singing that that the praise team picked out, you know, is all these different aspects come together. And when we expect the Holy Spirit to move in our service, those things should accent one another. They should complement one another, and they should come together. And so, uh, as it, it so happens, the Lord asked the question in the bulletin, hey girl, how's your diet? Of course, it's also, hey boy, how's your diet? Because um, today we're gonna talk about the diet of church members and, and not so much uh, this kind of diet as the inside kind of diet. Um, I was asked this morning, you know, why don't we, um, when we go out in nature, we expect to find what? I'm sorry? Beauty, what else? A bear. Bugs? <laughs> a bear? Okay, you expect to find animals, right? And, and you have that expectation. And, and uh, as we were talking, he said the, the uh, expectation was taught to him by his father. But he said when he goes out into the downtown area, for example, and he passes these people, he doesn't expect to see uh, people who need the Lord. He just sees people. And he wants to find that expectation of seeing people as, oh, that person needs the Lord, or oh, that person needs the Lord. But most of the time, we're scared to do that. And I think it's for fear of rejection, for fear of uh, being, a, uh, being called something like a Bible thumper or something like that. And, and I had an experience, and I, I told you all, uh, some of you uh, that were here that day, uh, an experience that I had. But I wanted to reshare that for those that haven't heard it. And there's uh, several in the church that haven't heard it. But I was, I was uh, running a bus ministry for a different denomination of the church years and years ago. Um, and, uh, and so I was running that for them and and I had a bus route because uh, a guy that, that um, uh, was responsible for me dedicating my life back to God, I guess he's not really responsible because God did that, but he was part of that my coming back to God. And uh, in that rededication, uh, he was moving. He was moving to Tennessee. And I don't know if you've ever been to Tennessee, but he moved to the woods of Tennessee. And when you go to the woods of Tennessee, you're in the woods of Tennessee. I mean, you, you can call out for a neighbor. They won't hear you unless they expect him to call. Okay? And and so, uh, anyway, he was moving up there, and I was, I took over his route here, and and uh, so I was running that bus route. He called me one day. He said, he said, his name was Martin. He said, David, this, this, uh, I, I'm torn. He said, I'm torn between these two churches, and I need to go to one of them. I said, okay. He said, but I don't know which one. He said, but if you would come up here, I know the Lord will tell you which one I'm supposed to go to. <laughs> okay. And so I didn't have a job at the time other than running the route for the church. And I didn't have any income. And I, I, was, uh, I was not in a good way as far as uh, I didn't have a car, I didn't have anything. And uh, so I decided I was going to take a bus to, to, this, to Tennessee. And, and that, then all I had to do was come up with a bus fare, right? You know? and, uh, and so I, 
I, I just went on faith, and I used to carry a lot of candy. I don't anymore, so don't reach in my pocket. But uh, I used to carry a lot of candy for the bus kids, and they was they were bad about just reaching in my pockets and getting candy out, right? And so uh, I said, well, I'm going to come on this Sunday, and I picked a Sunday, or I picked a weekend. And uh, it was like a month out or so, and I figured I could come up with the money in a month. And um, so one Sunday, I'm cleaning out my pockets, and a $100 bill falls out of my pocket. I'm like, where'd that come from, you know? And so um, I later found out that some one of the adults, while the kids were sticking their hands in my pocket, had stuck that 100 in my pocket because they felt led by the Lord. And so, um, so I get up, and I'm, I'm excited. I want to go buy a bus ticket. And I get a call from a lady who says, hey, uh, I found you a car. And it's a little uh, such and such station wagon, and it'll be really good on gas. And y'all remember station wagons, right? <laughs> okay, this was a Ford job, all right? And uh, I said, great. And I said, but I don't have any money. She said, oh, I already bought it for you. All you got to do is go down there and pick it up. All right, now, yesterday I didn't have $100, and yesterday I didn't have a car. Today I've got $100 in a car. And so the Lord provided those things. So I go, I pick up the car, and uh, the guy tells me all about it, you know, and, and I take off to Tennessee the next weekend. And I get up there on $20 of okay? gas. Of course, that's back in the day, you know. And I, I, I'm having a great time. They decided to have a fish fry. And they had a creek running through the backyard. And it was about waist high. And they said, you want to go fishing? I said, sure. They said, all right, grab that trot line there. And I grabbed it, you know. And we tied it off one end. And then we walked it up the creek and we tied it off on the other end. Then we went back and we started baiting each other. Well, we didn't get halfway before those hooks were just doing this, you know. And there was fish everywhere. And so I was having to go back while they were still baiting. I'm having to go back and throw the fish up on the bank. You know, and I'm having the best time. It was, it was like that moment when Jesus told them to cast the net on the other side. I was having the best time. And so they called in the people, the neighbors. And I didn't know what neighbors or where they came from, but all of a sudden out of the woods, there came people. You know? And by the end of the evening, we had 40, 50 people out there, and we were playing washers. I had never played washers before. It was my first time. And what they do is they put a can in the ground, and you throw it. Quit acting like you know my story. But they, they, <laughs> You know, and, and they throw that washer back and forth, and they're having the best time. And, and uh, the next day, I went to church with them. Went to church that morning. Went to church that evening to the other. And I said, well, Mark, I don't know which church God's calling you to, but this is the one I feel like he's calling me to. So either it's that one, and i got to move here, or you got to take that. So uh, he said, well, uh, I, 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 I was leaning in that direction. That's when I found him. He ended up starting a bus ministry. It was a little country church in the middle of nowhere. But they grew 100 and something kids the first year. And it was amazing, amazing. Well, on the way home, yeah, on the way home, I was driving along, and I saw this couple walking down the road. And the Lord, I'm listening to uh, Petra. I don't know if y'all remember Petra. But I'm listening to a cassette, a cassette of Petra. And uh, I'm jamming, you know, and I'm driving, and I see this couple, and the Lord's saying, pick them up. I'm like, I don't pick anybody up. I said, pick them up. I just gave you a car. I'm like, man, pull over. And I, I get them in the car, and I'm like, hey, how y'all doing, you know? And where are you going? They said, well, we're going to Monroe, Louisiana. I said, well, I'm going that way. I can get you all the way to Monroe. They said, all right. So I'm, I'm Jim and the Petra, and the Lord starts saying, 
David, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, of course I love you. Feed my sheep. It's like, no, no, no. no. I picked them up. <laughs> I picked them up. I'm playing Petra Hughes that. You know? You can do all things. You're almighty. You're great. You can do everything you need to do. Use Petra to win them to you. Work for me while I'm going to work for them, right? David, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. Lord, come on. And so for 20 minutes, I am fighting this. I mean, I, it is killing me. Feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. And I'm like, no, Lord, no. You, you know, I, I, I'm just a bus leader. I don't, I don't know anything. And I'm good with kids, but I'm not good with old people. And, you, you know, Lord, I just, they're, they're an old couple. They don't know. They've heard of you, you know, and I'm just arguing. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. And about that time, I saw the tallest McDonald's sign I have ever seen. <laughs> sticking above the trees. And a, 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 a light bulb, if, if there's one that ever appeared above my head, that was the moment it first happened. It appeared above my head, and boom, I knew what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to get them some food. And so I asked them, I said, when's the last time y'all ate it? Oh, well, we ate this morning. No, seriously, when was the last time y'all ate? Well, two days ago. Boy, I get to McDonald's, and it only cost me $20 so far. I still had 80 And so I pulled in that McDonald's, and I bought them not only something to eat now, but I bought them stuff to take with them. You know? If McDonald's ever lasted, I hope the Lord put a blessing on it, because I gave them enough to last two or three minutes. You know? Well, then at that point, it's wide open. And that's when I learned that if you reach the need, you can reach the Spirit. It's what Jesus did. He reached the need first, then he gave him spiritual food. Right? And so I realized that their need had been met. And I said, you know what? I've been arguing with the Lord for the last 20 minutes. And it has just been an amazing conversation. He asked me if I loved him. I told him yes. And he said, feed y'all. I didn't know y'all hadn't eaten. And now, let me tell you about my Lord and what he just did. I was at this church, and I told him the whole story of how God had given me a hundred dollars. God had given me a car. This man was looking for a new job in Monroe, Louisiana. He was moving back to his wife's family to restart. Now, I don't know if he ever accepted the Lord, but he can't say he didn't hear that. Because I told him everything the Lord had done for me. I told him about my rededication to God. I told him that if I put God first, God was going to take care of my needs like nobody else. And it was amazing. It was the best ride from that point all the way to Monroe. That was in Mississippi. <coughs> best ride. We had the best time. I even turned down peppers. <laughs> you know, it was great. You said, well, how do I know when somebody needs that? Folks, do you love Jesus? Feed a sheep. Feed a sheep. Our scripture this morning says that we should be on a spiritual diet. All right? And so, physically, how many of you took on a diet for New Year's? Anybody? David, thank you for raising your hand. I know you just did that for supporting me because you're at least a need to a diet here. But anyway, well, we should all have a good diet of spiritual food, right? So diet seems to be a bad or a little word, but it's really not because the things that you take in will come out, right? We know how to exercise for the Lord. Give me some, uh, Tim, give me a, a way to exercise for the Lord. Walk, walk the track. Okay, that's it. For the Lord. Spiritual. <laughs> Aaron Holt. Oh, 
Lord, I got you. Yeah. Hanging out with the right spiritual people. There you go. All right. Hmm. So that's a start. What about reading your Bible? That's a good one. Is that an exercise? Listening to West Jacobs doing his love storm. Giving West, listening to West, yeah. Listening to those that are preaching the word. Um, so, read the word. What, what's another one, ladies? What's another one? Praying. Very good. I knew one of you had it. Praying. That's it. Praying. You know, it's it's both a physical and a spiritual. Because you got to get down on your knees and get up. So that's a good one. Praying. Reading your Bible. What else? Woo! Singing. Singing. I can't believe you didn't holler that one. Singing. Singing. Praising God. Praising God. I can find a troop of people that believe like you do that want to put their belt. Ah. Ooh. Ooh. What was that? <laughs> say, say that again. I'll, I'll repeat it. Finding a group of, a group of people that like minded. Like minded. Like minded. Woo. You see, that's where the church has been messing up. We've been expecting people to come in here that are like-minded. But you know what? The only way people, unless they come from another denomination that's similar to yours, the only way that you get people to come in here and become like-minded is to teach them what you believe. And then let them decide for themselves. Did you know that we're not to judge the world? Whose job is that? God's. It is God's job to judge the world. Mm. Look at that, uh, what is that, Corinthians? Is that what I gave you? So, when you are assembled, and I am with you in spirit, and the power of our Lord Jesus is present, hand this man over to, uh, to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. I'm going to tell you what's going on before, because you're like, whoa. Uh, so what happened here is there was a man, young man, sleeping with his uh, uh, his daddy's wife, and they were members of the church, members of the body of Christ. And so Paul says, "Look, you 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 you're patting this guy on the back, you're you're doing all these things for him, but he's living in sin. He's committing incest." He says, hand this man over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. What is he saying? He's a Christian. What are we supposed to do to him? <coughs> if he's committing wrong, what are we supposed to do to him? <coughs> Alright, pray for him. What are we supposed to do first? Okay. We're supposed to go to him and rebuke him. If he does not receive the rebuke, what do we do next? Take someone else from the church with you and do it again. If he still doesn't repent, what do you do? Bring him before the church. And Paul says, hand this man over to Satan. Because it's better for him to die in this world than for his soul to die. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens a whole batch of dough? So what does that mean about the church? If the church is the dough, a little bit of sin really does affect it, doesn't it? It does. Somebody living in sin, and you don't correct them, what, what, what is it? It's messing up the whole batch. You say, well, I'm not responsible for somebody else's sin.
me tell you, Martin Luther was fed up with the church. He was a protestant. Not just a Protestant. He was a protestant. He said, look, y'all are doing wrong. You're spending wrong. You, you're lying. You're cheating. You, you're using the people's money for your own gain. What in the world are you doing? He said, this is wrong. And what happened? The First Reformation came. Now, he didn't intend for it to go the way it did, but did it need to go the way that it did? Yes. We're proof that it did. We're proof that it did. Your boasting is not good. Get rid of the old G's, those that hinder you, so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old bread, leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. Not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral. Right? In, in other words, he's saying, you already know the world's bad. You already know the media's bad. You already know that you know, you're not going to get a fair judgment out there. Uh, uh, what's Planet Fitness? What's their motto? We don't judge. We don't judge. You know, there's never been a more lying statement than that one right there. I've been in the Planet Fitness. And I go up to the table and say, I want a membership. They look at me like this. <laughs> they lied to their teeth. They were judging me. They're like, really? Yeah, you wish plan to either one. You know, I mean, are you kidding me? The world judges you harder than anybody. Harder than you judge yourself. You want to be a part of that? There it is. Not all the meaning of this world who are immoral, greedy, and swindlers or idolaters. In that case, you would have you would have to leave this world. You know, I mean, we're we we kind of kind of stuck here. The Lord comes back, right? So we got to deal with that. We got to we got to know what to be a part of and what not to. And so we don't have to judge them, but we can judge their actions, right? I, I was called for jury duty one time, and then I told the judge, I said, "Well, he might be kin to some of my folks in the church, and I really don't want to pass judgment on him." He said, "You're not judging the man; you're judging what he did." And he was right. We don't have to judge the people. We can judge what they do and know whether we want to be a part of that or not. But now I'm writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister in Christ, in church, but is sexually immoral or greedy. An idolater or a slanderer. A drunkard or a swindler. Do not even eat with such people. Well, that's harsh, isn't it? What business is it of mine to judge those outside of the church? Are you not the judge of those inside? Folks, we have to be accountable to one another. That's part of it. Now, should we treat it with grace? Yeah, of course we should. You know? I mean, there are some denominations that are good at shooting their wounded. You know? Boy, they love it. He did what? Let's go get him. You know? But what do we do? We say, hey, man, I know you're dealing with this. What can I do to help you? You know God doesn't want you to be in this. What can I do to help you? I'm praying for you, but what can I do? Right? Because you've got to get away from this. You got to find a new addiction to God instead of that. What business is mine to judge those outside of the church? Are you not to judge? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked person from among you. So we 
we've seen this. We've seen this in our church, and we've all said, well, we're standing for what God wants us to do. We're standing for what's right. We're going to stand according to God's word. We're going to be scripturally faithful. But are you? Let's look at, uh, can you bring back Peter? That's one, two, three there. I have scriptures for this. I want you to look them up. So here's what you do. You get on your search engine. Boom, and you type it out. Malice, seed, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. And you put those words and scripture next to it. And it'll pull every scripture up that has something to do with that. Just kind of read through that and learn what you need to learn. Okay? Therefore, this is your diet plan. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice. Right? Ooh, that's a tough one. Can't be mad at somebody. Can't be angry with them. Not even the preacher. Uh, <laughs> all deceit. Ooh, tax season coming up. Make sure you use the loopholes correctly. They're there for a reason. Hypocrisy. Who had that hypocrisy? Who did Jesus call him? And Sanhedrin and the uh, Pharisees. Pharisees and Sadducees. Uh, let me real quick give you how to know the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Ever thought about that? What's the difference? Well, the Pharisees saw, saw everything, whether it was either fair or not. It's fair, you see. Oh. <laughs> and the Sadducees? They were the ones that walked around like monks. Because they were sad, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you know the difference. All the seed, hypocrisy, envy, lusting after other people's stuff or their family, and slander, lying about them, making up stories, gossiping, all that kind of stuff. Folks, that should not be in a Christian's diet. And Peter says, rid yourself of these things. Get rid of them. Put them out of your diet. And take on things that are good for you. Like reading the Word. Like praying. Like giving it to those that need it. Folks, I think the answer to the question that was presented to me this morning is this. When you see somebody... Don't look to their spiritual need first. Look to their physical need as an opening to share your faith. Because if you can meet their physical need, that's what Jesus did, they'll be open to building their spiritual need. They may not realize they have one because the physical need is preventing them from even thinking about the spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Um, real quick, before we leave, if I could have some of you elders of the church, saints of the church, come forward. We'd like to, I would like for us to lay hands on Brother Wilbur and pray over him. So uh, all my prayer warriors and, and anybody that feels led to, if you come down and maybe come in this row behind him or just come right here and let's lay hands on him and pray over him and his recovery. And over the one that cares for him. Let us pray. Father God, we lift Brother Wilbur up to you and Miss Linda. We just ask you to be with him in a special and mighty way. We ask you to heal him, bring him back to a stronger and better physique. Give them what they need in this time of, of uncertainty and give them the ability to be strong in each and every moment. Give Miss Linda what she needs to be able to care for the family and give their family the compassion it needs to be there for them. We ask these things in your son's precious and holy name to claim victory over Brother Wilbur. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, how's your diet going? Let's sing Because He Lives. 